Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Marcus Mariota's Titans going up against Bortles' Jaguars. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thanks. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Sunshine State and Everbank Field here in Jacksonville. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with the Tennessee Titans. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And you know, Charles, as Larry pointed out in the open, got a couple of great quarterbacks set to square off here this afternoon. That ball's probably going to be flying all over the place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And the game has never been more quarterback-centric than it is now. And both of these teams have top-flight signal callers. Ryan Suckup, the man tasked with getting this one started. And off we go from Jacksonville. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And they're brought out there by their fourth-year quarterback from Central Florida, Blake Bortles. And, partner, this is a young man who's got it all. Big, strong arm, strong-legged runner when he decides to take off with the football, but it hasn't all come together for him because he's thrown way too many interceptions in his career. Has to take care of the ball better because when he does that, he can be one of the better starting quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, to your point, in three years, 51 interceptions. He's also fumbled 29 times. Now the rookie first rounder from LSU, it's Leonard Fournette. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. And now a look at the offense for Jacksonville. The Jacksonville Jaguars offense in 2016 truly expected to pick up where they left off in 2015, where they were a big play offense by the end of the season, whether it was running the ball or throwing it but they had some inconsistency in the offensive line and weren't able to reach those numbers. They're hoping for a repeat of 2015 with their 2017 squad. On second down, here's Bortles. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. A look at the defensive starters for Tennessee. The Tennessee Titans defense lived up to the mantra that every defensive coordinator preaches, and that's stop the run first. They finished second against the run. Unfortunately, they finished 30th against the pass, which led to a 20th overall ranking in defense. In order for them to continue to ascend, they've got to shore up the back end in the secondary and get a better pass rush. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Now Bortles. And he comes back with one complete. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Three down, three down. Three. 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 
Fournette, a first down carry. And an alley to run. And he's brought down. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. And Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. False start offense. Penalty on first down, backs him up five. It's now first down at 15. From the gun, it's Bortles. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Allen Hearns that time. And now it's second down. A little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. It really turned it loose, didn't it? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Here we go. Blue 45. Working from the gun. It's Bortles. And this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? They go back to the ground now with Fournette. <laughs> and down inside the 15 he goes. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Here we go. Three, 39. Three, 39. Into the red zone, it's Bortles. And it's caught, and he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 11 more on that one, and another first down. Well, he did everything but get him in the end zone there, but now they're set up. Golden opportunity, strong opening drive, and they're knocking on the door. And the way that they did it, now look where they are on the field, all right? This is naturally set up for a running play, isn't it? But with his ability to throw the football, his accuracy on this drive, you might want to think about a pass play in this situation. Mm, interesting. Time to find out. start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. And his kick is right through. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's culminated by Chris Ivory taking it into the end zone.
Here's Myers now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be let out by their quarterback. Out of Oregon, it's Marcus Mariota. Yeah, and everything went up in terms of numbers last year in his second season, right? Yards, touchdowns, quarterback rating before he broke his fibula late in the season. This is a guy who can do it all. Excellent pinpoint passer. And the wheels, oh my, he can break off a big run on you if you're not careful. They go play action here on first down. And this one caught by Delaney Walker. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Fresh set of downs here. Now a play fake here on first down. Going deep now for Decker. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. And now we get a peek at the Titan offense. The 2016 Tennessee Titans offense liked to bill itself as exotic smash mouth. And they got the smash mouth part down correctly. Finished third in the league in rushing, but only 25th in passing. So to become more exotic, they've got to get better play from their wide receivers on the perimeter. Now here's the first carry for DeMarco Murray. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. And time to take a look at the Jaguar defense. Malik Jackson won a Super Bowl in Denver before moving to Jacksonville as a big-time free agent. And he justified that signing, too. Six and a half sacks, a career high in 2016. I love what he did off the field, partner. Did you see this little note we've got on him? 181 pet adoptions made possible by Malik Jackson paying the fees in the offseason. Strong fella, soft heart. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Now let's see who this is on. So they decline it as that will bring up fourth. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. In his 10th year, here's Brett Kern to punt this one. Back deep for the Jaguars, Marquise Lee. And this one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven yard line. The Titan defense getting set now, coming back onto the field. And last time out, they got scored against. Their offense hasn't given them any help to this point, so maybe they need a stop here. A stop obviously would be nice, not critical at this stage of the game, but one of the things that you want to find out from your defense, are you really ready to play? After giving up a touchdown on the last drive, let's see if they have a little bit better spark, a little bit better bounce in this series. We'll see if they have that spark and that bounce right here. And tough starting field position here. On 
first down, Bortles. His throw incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Bortles will try again on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. A nickel set shown by the Titans on third down. Think and pass. They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. I don't know, he had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. Or the mental focus. Yeah, the that's true. Got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Brad Nortman now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And it'll be Titan football. And here comes the Jags defense as they get back out there. They forced the punt the last time, got off the field. I'm, I'm sure some of your D coordinators through the years, you, you liked when you heard those words, get off the field. Oh, there's no doubt well, Maybe you didn't it. like it when you heard those words. <laughs> it depended on when they were yelling them. But in this situation, absolutely perfect. Get off the field, force a punt, let the offense take over and do their thing and it resulted in a field goal. Now we'll see if they can do that again. Mariota now to throw on first down. He's gonna find his running back, it's complete. Give him two yards on that play, and it's a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. That was second down run for Murray. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audible there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Throwing is Mariota, and he's got a man, Corey Davis. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. On first down, Murray. Flash the stick skills on that run, but then stop shy of the 35. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. No other way to say it, but it was an off year for DeMarco Murray in Philadelphia and Chip Kelly's offense. Didn't really seem to be a fit, but when he went to Tennessee playing for Mike Malarkey, boy, did he fit in a big way. Finished third in the NFL in rushing behind Ezekiel Elliott and the late-charging Jordan Howard. He was ahead of Howard much of the year. I remember Coach Malarkey in preseason said, DeMarco Murray's my number one back. He'll get plenty of carries here, and he did. Hey, 
Mariota now on second down. Oh, nearly picked. And yeah, maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Let's see if they can convert here on third and three. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They go with Murray again. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Second and five. <laughs> to throw is Mariota. And some space here. And avoids the contact by sliding. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. Second down, Mariota. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Malik Jackson forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. He dumps it off for Henry. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A heck of a play there on third down, but amazingly, they're still short for fourth. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Suckup will put this one right through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three.
Suckup now set to kick it off following the main field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out come the Jags. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Call it a gain of a yard and it's going to bring up third and five. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. On the ground, this is T.J. Yeldon. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. Here's Brad Nortman now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Titans will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. Murray with a nice move. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. snap we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play it's a close game here early on more from jacksonville after this the nfl on ea sports is presented by snickers you're not you and you're hungry snickers satisfies with the former volunteer charles davis i'm brandon gauden it's the titans with the football here to begin quarter number two they're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out Again, it's Murray. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Murray has the first down and more. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. 
I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, where they call play side, but how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle, or if you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage, you've got a chance to rumble. They go back to Murray on first down. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They wanted it every position, and we just saw there some linebackers that can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. Second down throw for Mariota. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to lead to a third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. A Titan first down, Mariota to Walker. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. and 10. Here's Mariota. And complete to the tight end Walker right side. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop. Balls out of his hands right to the tight end. Nice completion. Just like they do it in practice. Toss to Murray. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The Titans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, Mariota. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. He connected on his first, this from 41. Here's Castle. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. 
And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. Jaguars getting set to go and they're coming off a three and out my friend I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving okay so how do you do that how do you shake things up you look at what you've called before realize <laughs> it hasn't worked go to so something well, else and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area After the fumble recovery, it's Bortles. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Second down following the incompletion. Portals on the give to Fournette. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. And they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Throwing now is Bortles. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Brad Nordman now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. And last time the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they thought they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? First down, Mariota. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. It's a gain of seven, and it'll bring up a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. the former Heisman winner. It's Derrick Henry. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. They keep it with Henry on first down, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Flag, 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 flag. 
Play fake. Mariota. And Matthews has it right side. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. They go play action. Mariota to the right side, complete to Taylor. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. down and his throw is incomplete his tight end Philip Supernall the intended receiver and that'll bring up second down there's so much precision in an offense especially when you're throwing the ball and in an out route plenty of it how about the quarterback hitting his back foot balls out of his hands receiver making his break making his cut he's got to time up perfectly not always easy to do. Just let him a little too much. Yeah, I remember back in the good old days, I was talking to a quarterback, and he said everything they did was on the count system. So when he took a snap, he counted in his head for certain routes, different time frames for each one, and he knew if the ball wasn't out of his hand at that point, he'd better eat it because the play was dead. motion again and that's going to be two in a row offense. the penalty it's Henry open space inside the 10 and here he'll get it down to the seven that one good for 14 yards and all of a sudden here it's third down it seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down which screams what throw the football you got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage but in this case they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass so you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. Eric Decker, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Titans are able to strike for six. When you give up a long touchdown drive, you're looking for a silver lining. In this case, it's the fact that your offense had a chance to rest, and now they can come out in the field charged up and ready to go. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that drive in total eight plays, and it ends with a Tennessee score.
Now here's Suckup out to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. A nice little juke. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? It's celebrating and off he goes. Touchdown, Jaguars. Marquise Lee, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars are able to strike quickly for six. Partner, you know the real key is to stopping a good passing attack? You tell me. Being able to tackle as soon as a guy catches the football. Didn't work out there. No, because when you give up the big run after catch, the rack yardage, that puts your defense in a big-time stressful position. A lot of rack yardage and a touchdown there on the big play. Now Myers for the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Myers now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch up, Every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, gave up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. Derrick Henry, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Second down, here's Henry. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense, but a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long that he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. They'll run with Henry, and the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. 
They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge big, man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. offense. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. Mariota hands to Henry, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Mariota. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It's a gain of five. And that's going to make it third down and ten. The Titans on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This is third and ten. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. The Titans on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and ten. Mariota to throw it. They set up the screen for Henry. The screen good for six, but it's not enough as it leads to a fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Here's Ryan Suckup for the Titan field goal. He made his first, this from 47 yards out. And Suckup will put this one right through. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So a good kick there, and they finish off the drive with three. And that should be the goal for an offense. Finish each drive with points. 
So that's a nice job there to come away with at least something. Suck up now, set to kick it off, following the main field goal. This fielded at the two. Oh, spinning away. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's going to take this all the way down inside the 40. Well, whatever the relationship was between the special teams and the offense, he's gotten a heck of a lot closer after a return like that. Special teams just keep setting them up. The offense thinks they'll go out there and knock them down. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Bortles now on first down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. So second and 10 here. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. And a short gain down to about the 33. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? They keep it on the ground. This time it's Yeldon. Nifty move. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They go play action here on first down. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. And that lead is now seven with a chance to go to eight or more if they want to get crazy here, which we don't expect. But I just know the way the game's being played with the analytics. There's going to be a lot more of going for two in a lot of situations, isn't there? Yeah, there's going to be. And I think their focus here, they don't want to give up anything going into the lockers on the other and just a little bit of time left on the clock. Yeah, they don't want to do anything to erase the good feeling they have right now by getting this late score in the half. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now.
The extra point now coming from Myers. And with that, the lead is up to eight. So that drive, four plays, and it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. Myers now to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And a lot of times you talk about establishing the ground game, probably something they need to do more of here losing in the second quarter. When you're riding your best torch, you've got to lather him up. The best running backs I've ever talked to, they've all said the exact same thing to me. I'll even break a good sweat until I get to 20 carries. You're full of good wisdom. Let's see if they can get him into the game more now. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. A first down throw for Mariota. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. out of the gun, Mariota. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Now Mariota. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They'll throw again. Mariota. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Titans on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This will be third and six. Again, it's Mariota. And some room to work. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play.
to the offense lining up first and ten. From the red zone now, Mariota. That is caught inside the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. Mariota now. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Eric Decker was the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. Throwing Mariota. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Eric Decker, the intended target, and it's third and short. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Mariota. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. How about the defensive stand here from first and goal, three straight incompletion. Yeah, I think people are wondering why didn't they try and run it at least once in there. But once the first incompletion happened, it's almost like they were committed to throwing the ball from then on out. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Suckup will put this one right through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Brandon, but, but six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Suckup now set to kick it off following the main field goal. Fielded about a yard deep. And he spins through. So we hit the halftime break here in Jacksonville with the Jags on top. As we send you a couple hours south to Orlando, let's check in with Larry Ridley for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Jaguars are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The Titans just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Jaguars take it at the one. Ivory's got it on the run, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. So they take a 7-0 lead. Third down from inside the 10. Mariota's going to find his mark, and he kept off the seven-play drive with a score. The Titans go up by three. First and 10. Here a throw deep down the field is caught, and he'll win the sprint to the end zone. Jaguars go up by four. Now first and 10, Portals connects with this rookie from Oklahoma, D.D. Westbrook. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out 
come the Titans now. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to air one out. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. And down in second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Second down in the offense, needing five yards. A play fake to Murray. Now Mariota. Looking sideline incomplete. They couldn't hook up with Decker that time, and it's third and five. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. The Titans on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This will be third and five. To throw is Mariota. And he locates Walker, complete. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Up past the 45 to the 47. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here's Murray. Murray has the first down and more. DeMarco Murray, kiss him goodbye. Touchdown, Titans. DeMarco Murray, 53 yards. And the Titans are able to strike for six. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. From the shotgun, it's Mariota, and he's got it. 
The try for two is successful, and it pushes the lead up to a field goal. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. Now here's Suck about to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Second down following the run. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Brian Arakpo coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. And there they bring pressure from the inside, and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. Following the sack, third and long for Bortles and the Jags. They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. A big third down play there for the Jags. 48 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. And they're not going to get this one off in time. It'll be a delay. First and 15 here behind the chains. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Four yards there on the carry. Gets it back to second and 11. 
Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it again with Fournette. Fournette fighting through and able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. They've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Throwing his Bortles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. They'll toss it to Fournette, and they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. They fake the handoff. Now Bortles. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball in their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is going to be third and 13. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got him for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play. Ostensibly, the best pass rusher is over you on every snap. I'd be a little jumpy myself. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Play action. Now it's Bortles. The swing pass caught. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. 24-yard touchdown, and the Jags are able to cash in for six. When we draw up defenses on the board, we do account for every receiver. But on that particular play, somehow he was wide open, became an easy touchdown pass. Now Myers for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown.
Here's Myers now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Mariota now on second down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Sometimes it doesn't matter how big and strong and powerful you are. The defense is going to win an occasional battle, and they did on that one. Stopped him well short of picking up a first down. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This will be taken at the 13. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Now a play fake. Bortles. And the Titan defense steps up here and down he goes. Jarrell Casey in there to get him for a loss of five. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Second down, here's Bortles. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and just like that, it's third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits, 
and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A very solid gain of 27. So here we go, first and ten now. Fournette on the counter. And some room to maneuver. And he's brought down. Eleven more on that one and another first down. I love it. A scout told me that with his running style, this guy's always the hammer, never the nail. But also has the ability to break it off big, too. I was on the field for a game he had last year at LSU, and there were some college boys warming up. And then Leonard Fournette walked in. He is a man. Full grown. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Play action. It's Bortles. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. The Jaguars on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and 14. From the gun, it's Bortles. And that is incomplete. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what did you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that that's answer. That's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. <laughs> Here's Brad Nortman now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Murray. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively.
That was second down run for Murray. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. Now it's a bootleg with Mariota. And incomplete here on third down. And they will elect to decline the penalty. Everything turned out the way they wanted it to. No sense in even having to take that one. Hence the decline. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Taken at the 37. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt, not too shabby. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he's got this one just across midfield to the 49. It's a good pickup on the ground of seven yards, and time has run out on this third quarter. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football here and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Second down, here's Fournette. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. The Jaguars on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This will be third and five. Here we go now. Green, 90. Shotgun now for Bortles. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Here's Brad Nortman now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. Right. 
And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. First down, Mariota. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Avery Jones able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of three. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. Mariota to throw it. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That would good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They go play action here on first down. Uncorks one for Davis. He rifles one that's intercepted. Read it well, and it's picked. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Jacksonville made plenty of changes in their coaching staff in the offseason, but they kept the defensive staff mainly intact. They're going to need a better payoff. They only had seven interceptions as a group last year. Good to get the interception there. They want plenty more of those because, as you said, a lot of cash invested on that side of the ball. A lot of talent. They're ready to roll. Leonard Fournette making his way back out there. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of a linebacker, being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. Come on, Here we go. Three. So after the INT, it's Bortles. Lee's got it over the middle. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Second down now after the pass completion. Portals now to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Lee. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 11 yards there for Jacksonville, and a first down as well. So the offense has it first and 10. On play action, now Bortles. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Lewis. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. 
these guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game, offense. And they just did not get the snap away in time. Here we go on first and 15. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Play action is supposed to be used to slow down pressure, slow down blitzes. In this case, though, if it takes a little too long to develop, you got people right in your face. And lucky just to get rid of the ball with the arm going forward. Could have been a fumble. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. Avoids him at the 40. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. 14 yards there on the pickup. And that'll bring up a third and one. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Here we go now. Here we go. On play action, they'll throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. So the offense, a little antsy, the flag comes out, and a five-yard penalty. offense. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Portals to throw on second down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Eric Walden coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number. We can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Following the sack, third and long for Bortles and the Jags. Here we go. Green, 90. Green, 90. 
Here's Bortles to throw. He goes underneath for Yeldon. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They'll get 19 out of this, but it will still bring up a fourth down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, this from 37. And Myers able to knock it through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So, Charles, I think from a defensive perspective, you have to look at that field goal there and consider it a win. You were able to keep them within a touchdown, so no question about it. That was the kind of stand that keeps you in ball games. now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away that's fielded in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line Marcus Mariota and the offense heading back out for their next possession and the interception that ended their previous drive that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game hey partner guess what there's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game they're only one score down yeah true I think we could have some twists and turns stay tuned shake off the interception he'll look to throw and that is caught on the right sideline but out of bounds says the line judge the throw took him a little too far it's second down this defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball and they were more than ready for it they've got the lead fourth quarter maybe can expect more passes like that downfield again Mariota on second and ten and Walker with it over the middle and he'll get to the 29 yard line brought down there four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end but unfortunately they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for that's gonna bring up third down They're still in search of the first down after that last completion Third down, Mariota. And he locates Walker, complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A big 30-yard play on third. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Mariota now to throw on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall. Give him seven on the play, and it'll make it second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. The 
They run with Murray. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this run. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Here's Brett Kern now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal added onto their lead, but that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive, and he's going to profess that he was happy to get points, but and we know it? that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. On first and ten, here's Bortles. Complete, this is Lewis. And down he'll go at the 25. A gain of six there on first. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. <laughs> now Bortles throwing on second down. He'll get this over to Westbrook. It's complete. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing his fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you've got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. Fresh set of downs here. Here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. To throw is Bortles. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly this is where they just want to milk the clock. They fake the handoff. Now Bortles. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. And the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. 
And this one is incomplete. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. Here's Brad Nordman now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. Mariota on first down. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Calais Campbell in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Class Campbell, all six feet, eight inches of him, signed away from Arizona in the offseason. He's going to be a mainstay, the defensive front for Jacksonville. Eight sacks last year, hoping to build off that. Those eight sacks were just one off his career high. Yeah, he's an excellent player, whole lot of man. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Second down throw for Mariota. Room here to run. Wow, evasive. Make a miss. And they're going to get this one up to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. He'll look to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It'll be a gain of four. And that'll make it a second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. That's going to set them back five yards. throw deep downfield and that's going to wind up incomplete however we do have a flag down let's check in with our referee Holding offense. so that one a hold right guard and you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. They'll look to throw. It's caught on the right side at Smith. 
Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. And look like some movement there. Let's get the call. Foster, offense. And that'll set them back five. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. And the yellow flag hurts this offense, and now they face a tough third down. And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. So a costly penalty and now a tougher third down situation. And here is motion again. And that's going to be two in a row. Foster offense. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Back to throw. He's going to let it fly. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. It's a big play there for Tennessee. And even 50 yards. He's back to throw. And complete to the tight end Walker right side. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Offense. 
So after the mistake by the offense, it cost him five yards. And now first and 15. And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. Hostile offense. again and that's going to be two in a row offense there offset some of the penalty yardage as it's second down. Mariota. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. And that one finds the ground, breaking a string of five straight completions. And it brings up second down. No, third. Third down. And they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. Usually going to pick up a holding call. And here comes play number six on this drive. some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Here's Mariota. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. What a great sequence by this defense so far. They've given him nowhere to go with the football. And they just have to make it stand up one more time because it appears that they've got their number. Can they not have a slip up here and allow the touchdown? Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. To the right side, complete to Taylor. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. 
So getting the big touchdown they needed late in the fourth. Now what do you do? You conservative and just tie it up? No, I think you put your practice into game situation. Go as fast as possible. You already have your play call ready to go. Go for two and decide it right now. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. That time, a nine-play drive. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. Here's Corey Grant at a return. They begin with a run by Fournette. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dial. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Jags grab it. And he brings it back to the house. It's a touchdown. And in a crazy inning, a defensive score wins it. Still catching our breaths from that electric finish. You get into overtime, that's one thing. It was a great four quarters. But then an OT, not only to win it, but to win it on a defensive score. Wow. Oh, it definitely. And I think from now on, we're going to definitely travel someone who can help us because I thought I was going to pass out at the end. <laughs> not just getting to the overtime, but the plays in overtime that led to this one. And to finish it on a defensive touchdown, a takeaway that gets into the end zone. I'm not rooting for anyone, but boy, I'd love to see games finish that way. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.